disk drive product ever. Uh, I see that. 1956. Wow. Five megabytes, 50 disks. Uh, and it just had two heads that basically squeeze the disk. So unlike today's drive where there's a head for surface, right. they had uh, to unload the heads, move it out, go to the next surface, go down and, and do it. Uh, huh. That's fascinating. Yeah, it was an amazing piece of And it's of a testament to the engineering and the technology that we still rely on that yep. today. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really remarkable. And the amazing thing about this is during the process of the restoration, Joe over there in the red shirt, before we had this thing running like this, he manually positioned the head wow. over every single track on every disc. It took him about nine months. And he digitized the data on every one, which you'll see when we're projecting some of the stuff. No errors. The entire wow, that's five amazing. megabytes. It was all clean data from the late 50s, early 60s. <laughs> it's really amazing. Uh, and you know, they did this thing with nothing to go on. I mean, it was the first of its kind. It's right. like an iterative process. It's just an amazing piece of engineering. Really clever stuff in the mechanical interlock so it can't destroy itself if something goes wrong. Uh, and although we don't have the original electronics, so we got a little modern microprocessor controller sitting underneath it, but the original tubes and relay circuit was just this elegant way of doing things to it, to be able to do it with really simple circuits and handle nonlinearities and noise and things. Uh, uh, for example, the way they measure position to run the servo is there's a little black stripe that you can see that's just on the other side of those numbers. Mm -hmm. There's just a wiper that runs up and down and measures the voltage between the two things. And they had a floating power supply and, and there's a tap at every disposition and they use relays to ground the position they want to go to. So then the wiper is just looking, uh, just that's just the error for where you want to go that just feeds into the tube circuit that drives these two clutches at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, so it handles all sort of nonlinearities, minimizes the noise and everything with this fairly simple concept. So all they had to do was pick this relay and tell it to go and it went to the right position. It's beautifully simple. Yeah, just really, really elegant design. <laughs> What's coming through here? Is that compressed air? Yeah. Um, if, if you see just on the other side of this plate, there's five pneumatic valves. So they use these magnetic clutches and the potentiometer and then the uh, that little black thing is a DC generator to measure velocity to, to sort of optimally go to the position you want, slow down and arrive on target. When it gets on target, that's not stable and really precise. So they have uh, they open a pneumatic valve then and they drive a piston into those, it's a conical shaped thing into those uh, little detents there. So the final position is determined by a mechanical detent. And they did the same thing uh, on the side of the arm for the, uh, the in and out. So there's the, the clicking you hear is the pneumatic valves uh, going. So there's one to drive the detent in, one to drive the detent out, and then on the track there's one for odd tracks and even tracks. They have two things, one to do the odd tracks, one to do the even, and they have one to load the heads. Unlike today's disk drives where the, the spinning disk drags the air along with it and it forms an air bearing that separates the head from the disk based upon a pattern that's defined on the bottom of the head. In this one, it's like a you know one of those hockey puck tables with the holes, except the holes in the puck, not in the, right. not in the table. Uh, so it, it, it floats on the film of air from the externally pressurized huh. pump. There were no errors after all this time. Yeah, it's just amazing. amazing. Apparently, uh, this was before I was working on the thing, but they said that the discs were you know, completely dusty, dirty, and everything. They had to get in there with gloss and some little soapy water, clean them wow. off, and, <laughs> and then it just worked. Wow.